Hello, I'm Vincenzo Mondello, I'm an Italian plant pathologist and I'm going to show you what we know about grapevine trunk disease with this quick uh, uh, overview. First, I'd uh, like to present you the leader of the scientific working group of, uh, on grapevine trunk disease for the Wynector project, that is Florence Fontaine. She's a researcher at the University of Reims and also is the chair of the European Construction FA1303 on the same topic. Currently, I work with her uh, at the same university just for this project. As plant pathologist, I work on the same topic at the SAF department of the University of Palermo. First, what are the GTD? Grapevine trunk disease are uh, uh, a group of fungal disease that mainly attack the perennial organ on grapevine, leading to leaf and berry symptoms and to death. Some were described at the end of the 19th century, like ESCA or apoplexy, and uh, as these diseases were considered typical of old vineyard. An increasing interest on GTD starts at the end of the 19th when several authors reported a recrudescence of ESCA disease also in young vineyard. Who are the GTD? In this uh, slide you can see what uh, we consider GTD. They are symptoms, both are external and internal, and mind pathogens. For instance, we have a Botiosphaeria dieback, also called black dead arms, and that is caused by pathogens belonging to Botrosferiaceae species like Diplodia, Neofusicoccum, Lausio Diplodia, or Dotiorella. Esca, uh, black mesley, apoplexy, grape, uh, grapevine leaf uh, strip disease uh, caused by fungi belonging to Fermonella and Phocremonium and Photimitiporia uh, for species. Uh, Eutipa dieback, also called Eutipios, caused by Eutipa lata. Petri disease, uh, young vine decline, caused by the trichomycotic fungi Fermonella chlamydospora and Phocremonium aleophilum. Blackfoot disease, caused by species of genera uh, Cylindrocalpon and Ilionectria, and Phomopsis, also called Excoriosis, caused by Phomopsis viticola. Where are they in Europe? The slides show you the distribution and frequency of the three main GTD. ESCA, Botosferia, and the Eutipa Dibax, as evidenced by a 2015 cost survey. As you can see, GTD are present in each viticultural area in Europe, especially in the most important areas like France, Spain, and Italy. Why the, uh, are they so important for viticultural economy? First, because in vineyard, they cause uh, the process, uh, production losses, plant death, and increasing the reimplantation costs. In enology, GTD causes a quality quantitative damages in wine production, for instance, less sugar and higher uh, value of pH. In table grape production, uh, they can cause depression of the product. And in nurseries also, uh, GTD causes uh, uh, infected propagation material, grafting failure, poor quality of a rooted graft. Just to give uh, you an idea how GTD can uh, interfere with economic uh, uh, of uh, viticulture, uh, this slide shows an estimation of the economic losses due uh, to the uh, presence of GTD in viticulture. Considering only the cost of the replacement of the dead wines, it is about of a billion of euros. and uh, a lot of grapevine diseases are well managed. So, for instance, downy mildew, powdery mildew, and botrytis. So why these are still not well managed? Uh, there are several reasons. The first is that GTD are multiple etiology diseases, two or more pathogens in the same plant. The second issue is the complexity in host pathogen and environmental interaction. Another issue is the disease cycle and diffusion closely related to the vineyard management. And at least, but not least, not efficient strategy to control them after sodium arsenide use prohibition. 
Now we start to uh, focus this on this problem just to explain why GTD are not so easy to manage. The first problem is that GTD are multiple etiology diseases. What means this? The first issue is uh, the, uh, this problem. To understand what this means, we first refer to a normal one pathogen disease. We have a susceptible host plant, a virulent pathogen, and environment. And if we also consider time, we will have a situation like, for instance, for downy mildew, in which one can see in spring uh, the chlorotic spot in leaves, then maybe one can see symptoms on grapes. At, at the end of the, of the season, one can see the yellow mosaic spot. Uh, but what happens if we have uh, not only one pathogen, but more pathogen in the same host plant? This is the first situation. So, but we have another pathogen, for instance. So, we have to consider also the relation with this second pathogen, with environment, and with the host plant. And the same happens if we have uh, another pathogen in the same host plant. If we consider also the time and the evolution of this relation, uh, we have to consider also that uh, maybe the pathogens could be present in the same time or maybe in succession. The result of this interaction is a very big chaos. And of course, uh, here we are not considering also the differences caused by, for instance, uh, cultivar susceptibility, different environment, etc. Another problem is the complexity in host pathogen environment interaction. Here, uh, for instance, about, uh, a part of Eutipa dieback that show typical symptoms. According with this interaction complexity, the other GTD are tricky to identify. For instance, Botosferia dieback uh, affected wine can, for instance, produce no symptoms or chlorosis uh, or necrosis or marginal necrosis that maybe uh, can become uh, like tiger strip leaves or also Botrosphalia can produce the death of the plant but in the same way also young esca for instance could uh, reproduce the same situation so we, are, we can have affected plant by young esca that cannot show symptoms, that show symptoms on leaves, and maybe also can show uh, apoplexy. And the same for the ESCA proper. So, the other, uh, another problem related to this uh, uh, complexity is also the symptom expression discontinuity. Uh, here I reported a map uh, refers to 1,000 vines that we surveyed for two years uh, for ESCA symptom in Sicily, and we uh, surveyed uh, uh, this vine both for grapevine leaf strip disease and for apoplexy. Uh, the legend beside can, sorry, can uh, help you to uh, read correctly this map. As you can see, some vines were symptomatic in 2006, were not symptomatic in 2007, and vice versa. And some were symptomatic both the years. That means that, for instance, if uh, uh, we uh, considered just one year of observation, uh, maybe we can uh, uh, underestimate the real presence of the disease in the field. For instance, if I uh, consider only the first year, maybe I, uh, I could hypothesize uh, that the disease is uh, spread with an incidence of a 7.7% for the first year. Or only for the 2007 data, I uh, can uh, maybe hypothesize an incidence of the 8.6%. But uh, if I have to uh, have a real idea of the incidence, maybe I have, of course, to consider all the plants in several years, and so the real incidence for this uh, survey is a real of, of about around the 14%. So for GTD, incidence must be evaluated as cumulative incidence. Another problem is uh, uh, that GTD always are uh, close related to the vineyard management. Uh, here, uh, 
you can see how the pathogen moves uh, into a vineyard. For instance, this disease sequel is referred to Pheochromonium aleophilum and Pheomonella chlamydospora that are uh, responsible for Escal petri uh, disease. Uh, the inoculum, as you can see, can uh, 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 can able to transfer to the pathogen from disease it would plant to healthy plant and are carried by wind, by water, by an insect and can reach the pruning wounds that are uh, uh, susceptible to be infected by this spore. Uh, and uh, of course we know that for instance in vineyard pruning wounds are very frequent because uh, pruning is a, a periodical uh, method and periodical practice in vineyard. And uh, sometimes the pruning wounds should be, could be susceptible for a long period of time. And also uh, you can see that for instance also pruning debris are responsible for the, uh, the, 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 the disease spread, sorry. Uh, another problem is that no efficient strategy to control GTD is uh, is uh, um, available at the moment. Uh, it's important to say that uh, actually, uh, currently, we have no cultivar or with taxa that show resistance against GTD, and that currently no chemical is able to control these diseases. And before 2001, we uh, could use the sodium arsenide, um, usually in this, in this way, uh, a treatment on wood in winter for two consecutive years, then two years without any treatment, and so on. But in 2001, sodium arsenide was uh, uh, prohibited, and so um, due to uh, uh, the uh, threat for uh, human uh, health, and uh, so we have no uh, more fungicide able to control GTD. And this maybe led the increasing of the GTD incidence in, in vineyards. And uh, for some authors, uh, uh, some authors consider a GTD problem uh, potentially destructive for viticulture as uh, was the phylloxera in the late uh, 19th uh, century. Okay, how uh, to solve this problem? The first step was to, stu to study the disease. In this slide, I uh, show you uh, how since 2000, researchers worldwide start to study several aspects of the disease, like uh, epidemiology, pathogen, symptom expression, etc. Et and also, uh, you can see how the problem is uh, spread in all viticultural area of the world, because uh, you, you can see that research studies uh, the GTD in France, in the United States, but also in South Africa, in New Zealand, in Iran, in Portugal, in Canada, uh, in China, in China, and Argentina, and so on. The second step was to coordinate it to coordinate these studies because the research on GTD started with no coordination research. Uh, and the uh, uh, researcher works isolate. The first uh, uh, attempt to coordinate the research was the International Council of Grape and Chang Disease, uh, started in 1999, and uh, since then this council uh, has uh, uh, released, released several meetings just to uh, uh, allow to researchers to share their knowledge, their experience, their studies on uh, GTD. Uh, a second step was also, uh, uh, a second step in the European scale was the uh, institution, the constitution of the European Cost Action FA1303, that is uh, uh, Sustainable Control Grape Van Trang Disease that uh, has uh, four uh, uh, main topics, the pathogen characterization, the studies on epidemiology, microbial ecology, host pathogen interaction, and disease management. And uh, also important, the cost action is because uh, uh, 
for the first time it uh, was put in evidence that it's very important to share the result of the research with end users. So what uh, we don't uh, we know now uh, about the uh, grapevine trunk disease. Uh, the first slide show you what is uh, uh, what we learn in these uh, 15 years of study. Uh, as you can see, since uh, 2000, the number of species associated to grapevine trunk diseases is increasing. Especially, for instance, for uh, Eutypa dieback, or for uh, blackfoot, or uh, also for uh, or for Esk and Petri disease. And uh, what up, well, uh, we also know something more in uh, what happens in vineyard, for instance, related, for instance, to disease diffusion. Here we uh, are reporting uh, the disease cycle of uh, three, the three main GTD diseases, uh, Eutypa dieback, Botosphere dieback, and uh, Esca. Uh, and Esca. And uh, uh, as you can see, all pathogen can infect elf vine by pruning wounds, and this wound could remain susceptible to infection for several days or for months. But we know also what happens in nursery. Uh, for instance, some studies conducted on nursery have evidenced how GTD are also a problem during the preparation of plant material for new vineyard. For instance, these uh, GTD pathogens like Femonella chlamydospora, Feocremonium, Cadophora, Botryosperiase, Cylindrocarpon and Cylindrocaliella were found in mother plants plants, in cuttings, in the omega cut machine, and also in grafted materials. The control of this disease became, became very important for nurseries since they are unware called distribute uninfected young plant. As you can see, several steps of the production of uh, planting material were uh, found to be contaminated by this uh, pathogen. And now, uh, results also allowed us to understand what happens in vines, for instance, in, re in relation to symptom expression. Uh, uh, for instance, we just can to uh, just uh, have uh, more idea in what happens in, uh, in vines and why we have foliar symptoms, since uh, the pathogens is not in leaves, but leaves and in fact only wood. So several studies uh, evidenced, for instance, the production of uh, this pathogen to produce secondary metabolites that acts as a phytotoxic compounds. For instance, Eutypalata produce eutypine, and uh, Esca produce uh, Schitalone and Isosclerone, and Botosferiasis produced dihydroisocumarins that are uh, were excited in uh, implanta and showed phytotoxic, uh, phytotoxic activity. Sorry. Uh, furthermore, some pathogens produce also extracellular, extracellular enzymes that are able to attack cellulose and hemicellulose, and Eutypalata and Fomitiporia mediterranea can degrade lignin through lignases. And uh, these toxins may maybe may move from infected wood to leaves through xylem. But the way how they sometimes cause symptoms or not in leaves remain unclear. And to understand the basis of the symptom expression, uh, maybe could help to manage the GTD. Again, uh, what happens in vine uh, in relation, for instance, to pathogenic mechanism. Uh, some researchers focused uh, two cell level studies to understand the early interaction between host plant and pathogen. Uh, these studies show that host plant try to defend itself from pathogen invasion by isolating it in infected vessels. But the result is that these axillomatic vessels lose their function and if the attack is strong, plant can suffer and at least can die. At genetic level, the presence of the pathogen induces the expression of genes related to defense response. And what is possible to do against uh, uh, grapevine trunk disease in nursery? According to this information, uh, what could we do so uh, against uh, GTD? 
We know that uh, they can spread by natural infection and also from infected material from nursery. So, in nursery, the best will be to adopt measure to limit the contamination from GTT uh, pathogen as, uh, for instance, uh, um, the mother plant inspection just to uh, individuate some plant that maybe could be infected. Uh, to use uh, sterilization of tools uh, just because, uh, uh, for instance, Shisor or Megacut machine pet were found to be infected by uh, GTD uh, inoculum. Sanitation of material. Uh, someone uh, tried to uh, sanification, sanification of the material by, for instance, hot water treatment or uh, by physical or chemical biological method. Or maybe could be important to have a post-production control, mm, visual control, classic or molecular. And uh, also uh, in field we have uh, maybe uh, the possibility to understand what we can do in field. Uh, for instance, someone speak about uh, alternative pruning methods like the double pruning, the go pusor method, or trunk renewal, or pruning wound protection with chemical or biological product, uh, or something related to the vinyl management, for instance, uh, no pruning debris left in field, late pruning, no pruning during rainfalls, and so on. Or someone tried to uh, fight the, the pathogen directly in the wood with the chemical treatment on trunks, like uh, with the fungicide injection. Or someone, uh, someone tried to uh, Suppress, suppress symptom expression, for instance, using foliar fertilization or elicitors, just to uh, induce a response, uh, a defense response in uh, in host plant. Oh, this slide is just to uh, show how Joseph Armengol, uh, in a simple and elegant way, uh, well synthesizes how currently both viticulturists and nurserymen are called to use good practice to limit the threat of GTD. But to do this may both be informed. So we have no choice. We have to transfer the research knowledge to uh, the end users. Because if we uh, have just a good management in nursery but not in vineyard, we will have grapevine trend disease. And in the same way, if we have a bad uh, nursery management and the good vineyard management, in the same way we will have grapevine trunk disease. The only uh, possibility is to have currently a nursery, good nursery management coupled with a good vineyard management. And so this could be a way to, to have a, a vineyard without or with very uh, poor uh, presence of GTD. Uh, just to uh, respond uh, uh, to the, the, the need to transfer the, the knowledge on GTD to end users, um, the one hectare project uh, was uh, made just for with this goal. Uh, the main goal of the project is just to uh, to uh, improve and to uh, share all we know about GTD uh, uh, without, with uh, several uh, uh, tools. And who wants uh, can visit the One Network website to have a more detailed and complete information on this project. Uh, just to give you uh, some idea uh, of the project, uh, the project involved uh, uh, the study of two grapevine disease, the flavescence de ray and the uh, and grapevine trying diseases, and this study will be will be uh, will be in ten viticulture areas of uh, seven European countries, and the uh, the the the. The key figure of this project will be the facilitator agent that has the, the duty to connect the technical world with the scientific world. And uh, uh, just, just to give you some information on 
uh, with what which is possible to study in the one network uh, in regarding the GTD um, uh, we here report some of the topic that could be analyzed uh, at, the, at the end of the project the idea will be to uh, individuate the best practice uh, in Europe and to disseminate uh, it in all Europe just to, to focus on, just to have a, uh, a little focus on each of these points, for instance, we can talk about pruning wood protector, because one of the most interesting topics will be the analysis of data related to wound protection. To date, both biocontrol agent and chemical are uh, being tested for this uh, uh, purpose. Uh, Relating to the chemical protector, of course, uh, uh, chemical protector have uh, both positive and uh, negative aspects. Chemicals, for instance, uh, have a strong support of the research industries, show stable performance in different situations, but are not suitable for uh, organic viticulture and maybe and may have an impact on environment. And uh, to date, uh, for instance, uh, uh, to protect uh, pruning wound, uh, they are used. Uh, they is used, for instance, are used some pruning paints that are some paint that are added with some fancy side like tebuconazole plus boric acid plus octilinone, or uh, and so on. Or, for instance, one of the uh, last product registered in France uh, to protect wound is this phytoplast uh, that is a, uh, a mastic uh, added with the uh, uh, ciproconazole, theophanate methyl, and he is uh, actually registered against Eutipa dieback, but is also uh, re will be registered also for ESC. Uh, what about chemical protector. Uh, we have also to see that uh, some authors have tested the, some chemicals to, uh, against several GTD pathogens. And this graphic shows you how the same ingredient uh, can have different efficiency according to the pathogen. And uh, for instance, you can see uh, the red one that has uh, different uh, efficiency uh, against Eutipalata or Tonginia minima or, uh, for instance, Lassio diplodia teobroma or diplodia seriata, and the same also the, the, the yellow one. So, what uh, uh, is important to, uh, to put in evidence is uh, that uh, uh, is important to uh, uh, to have a correct identification of the main pathogen, we have we have to uh, to control because uh, according to the pathogen, we have to choose the best uh, chemical to control it. Uh, in the other way, in the other hand, we have also biocontrol agent that can can use it and are used it to uh, use it to protect uh, uh, protection. To protect sorry wound uh, pruning wounds, and for instance, they have also positive and negative aspects. For instance, uh, they could be of course uh, uh, suitable for organic farming and for environment, but have no fungicide side effect and are not compatible with chemicals. And regarding the GTD, trichoderma show a different efficiency on the controller on grape and trend disease according to climate pathogen and cultivar, as you can see in this slide. So the, the effect of trichoderma in protecting the wound is not only dependent, depending in the um, trichoderma grape vein interaction, but is also is also sorry is also depending on the trichoderma grape vein interaction. Uh, uh, nevertheless uh, studies on uh, biocontrol agent are still in progress and for instance the studies uh, uh, led to uh, individuate to uh, some trichoderma strains that are able to resist to benzimidazole and for and uh, also 
these studies led to the identification of new potential biocontrol agent like Phytium, Phytium oligandrum that is a root colonizer and that uh, act against GTD indirectly because uh, he stimulates the plant defense. And of course, uh, if we consider the uh, first trichoderma uh, resistant benzimidazole strain, this could be uh, an opportunity because uh, maybe is could be a very important in the integrated pest management strategies. The, um, another uh, interesting hypothesis that could be investigated for the control of GTD, but not only for GTD, is the use of sound colored proteid by the theoretical ph physics uh, Joel Sternheimer that studied the interaction between a protein and its related proteid. Uh, according to his theory, when a protein is forming, the amino acid vibrate uh, and uh, each protein produces its melody and uh, this sound can affect uh, the function of the protein and according with this uh, uh, with Stenmeier, each protein has two proteidae, one inhibiting and one stimulating. The first results of this uh, uh, proteidae was made on tomato plants using a proteidae stimulated, uh, a protein related to the resistance to drought and according to the author, the results were incredible. And uh, proteidae was also tested and uh, used for the control of grapevine trunk disease and for the first time they were, uh, proteidae was used in 2003 in France and uh, in 2013 about 150 hectares were treated in this way and uh, several proteidae were used both uh, related to plant and to the pathogen and according to the author this use of, of proteidae in field show real results in controlling the disease and uh, currently proteidae is also used against downy mildew and in cellular uh, just to avoid uh, stop of fermentation. Uh, another um, aspect that could be analyzed that will be uh, that will be analyzed during this project will uh, will be the application of fertilizer, biostimulant, or plant elicitors uh, to vines mm. uh, because uh, it uh, was uh, uh, assessed that they can directly uh, have an influence directly. In, uh, in the fungal infection process or on the physiological uh, state of the, the plant in using, for instance, a defensive response. But we have to, to study well because uh, some results are not, uh, well, some results are contradictory because, for instance, on ESC disease, some uh, uh, biostimulant micro and micronutrients uh, produce an increasing of a symptom expression in leaf, uh, while other compounds like this one uh, ha uh, show the opposite effect. And to date, uh, there is uh, a promising uh, uh, compound uh, of magnesium, calcium, and a complex that uh, improve the uh, the bio assimilation of this mineral uh, that is patent pending. That uh, through the increasing of trans resveratrol production, that is a phytolexin, can uh, can significant, significantly decrease the foliar symptom expression in field. Another uh, topic that could be uh, analyzed is the water management because uh, uh, some studies um, uh, show how the water, uh, um, uh, in, uh, water and uh, water availability in particular can uh, is re strictly related to symptom expression and. Uh, for instance, maybe a water management could be considered to control GTD where uh, uh, the, uh, the water management is possible to be applied. Uh, 
and uh, um, other um, interesting uh, topic to be uh, to to study uh, are, for instance, uh, some techniques that are uh, are, uh, are tested uh, and. Uh, seems to have a good results. One of these, for instance, is the, the cleaning of the trunk from decaying or dead or symptomatic wood. That is called in French curettage. Uh, and the curettage is, uh, uh, as you can see from this uh, picture, uh, images uh, take from this video that you can see on YouTube. Uh, curettage consists in the, uh, in the cleaning of the trunk of the affected wine from the uh, rooted uh, from root wood, and by the use, uh, for instance, of these uh, of simple tools like, for instance, this saw. Uh, according to uh, to people that uh, tested this technique, uh, a man can can, can be uh, can is a can be able to uh, treat uh, 100 uh, trunks per day. Uh, and I'll, say, I'll, I'll just say you can find this video on YouTube searching ESPV Institute de Science de la Vigne du Vin. Uh, oh, just to give some information about the uh, how the cleaning of the trunk works, uh, an experimentation by uh, made made by Sikavac uh, showed that, for instance, the curettage when it well, the cortege was applied to escad affected vines. Uh, there were very good results. Uh, in uh, treated vines, the symptom incidence decreased uh, until the 0.6%, uh, while in the control rows, uh, the ESCA incidence was about of the 80.5%, and uh, the recovery rate recorded on the 303. Uh, treated uh, wines was uh, of the 85 percent. Another uh, aspect that a lot of people try to uh, uh, to manage was, uh, for instance, the idea to find an alternative pruning system and methods to manage vineyards. And one of these, for instance, is the double pruning that. Uh, seems to be suitable to control the, the GTD. The, the, this technique uh, is uh, um, very simple to explain because it consists in two different uh, uh, pruning. The first one that is not selective and that uh, uh, leave uh, uh, canes of uh, 30, 14 centimeters and this is made uh, early in the winter. And uh, uh, a second pruning that is due, uh, that is uh, realized, uh, will be realized in, um, in spring uh, in the classical way of the two um, two bud uh, pruning, uh, the idea is that, for instance, with the first pruning, we create a, a susceptible, uh, sorry, susceptible wound uh, wound in vineyard that could be uh, infected by GTD pathogens. But with the second pruning, we can eliminate all the infected wood and we uh, uh, produce new wounds that are less susceptible from uh, uh, related to the, the pathogens in field. Uh, the only uh, problem could be maybe the cost of these uh, two operation in field. And uh, another uh, topic that we are going to analyze is, uh, for instance, uh, uh, the alternative pruning method that is based, for instance, on the subflux maintenance. Uh, here you can see uh, the wood of two different wines. The one on the left that show a lot of altered wood and discolored wood. And while the second uh, uh, one looks healthier, 
Why this difference? They were pruned differently and uh, if one doesn't respect the sub flux, maybe the results will be the first situation in which we have a, a lot of uh, discolored and altered wood. If you respect this, the sub flux, you uh, obtain more uh, healthy uh, wood inside. And how this, uh, for instance, this picture can explain well. Uh, uh, mm, this slide uh, speaks about the Guyot Poussard pruning method that is a pruning method that uh, respects the, uh, the, the, uh, the sub flux and uh, for instance we can report, uh, I report here uh, um, a trail that was made by the Service Interprofessionnel du Conseil Agronomique de Vinification and de Analyse du Centre Sikavac and uh, that tested this kind of uh, alternative uh, pruning method since 2005. Uh, this method respects, of course, I, I already said the sub flux and the results are reported in these graphics. You can see how uh, this method, the this pruning method can reduce by the of the presence of symptomatic vines when compared with the classical method. Another uh, possibility that um, will be um, studied and uh, focused is the regeneration of trunk. Uh, what uh, what means regenerative uh, so regeneration of the trunk? Uh, we can uh, eliminate affected wine, the wood of affected wine, and try to substitute and to replace uh, the the lost trunk with uh, a new one. And we have we can, for instance, have two uh, possibility. The first is the regrafting, that in French is called uh, regrafage. Uh, as you can see in this picture, and these are pictures taken from the video, from the same video on YouTube, uh, the regrafting consists in to redo a grafting in, uh, in a rootstock. So, uh, for instance, if we have uh, an affected in uh, affected plant, we can eliminate the trunk until we found the rootstock, the healthy rootstock, then in the healthy rootstock we can can do another grafting and uh, in this way for instance like like this the pictures show you and then after uh, after uh, three years as reported from in this picture of Sikavac um, the regrafted wines reached the production of the older one, both in quantity and quality. And just because uh, they this fruit, the uh, the maturity of their root system. As as I see before, you can see the this video on YouTube. Another uh, similar uh, method that try to replace affected wood, uh, or affected trunk with the timely trunk renewal. This is a theory that is uh, um, is uh, sponsored and by Richard Smart and he takes the, the idea just because uh, uh, wine, uh, wine, the wines are not uh, one trunk uh, uh, plant, but usually in nature there are uh, there are a lot of trunk, and also in uh, in old age, uh, grape wine was uh, breeded with multiple trunk. So the idea of uh, Richard Smart is to uh, uh, just to uh, uh, grow two sucres beside the main trunks, and so in this way we can periodically uh, renew the older trunk with the new one and uh, so we can have uh, uh, another healthy trunk. And this method is uh, also still is yet used for instance in, in America, in the USA, but is also tested in France. Trunk injection is uh, an um, 
an opportunity that could be analyzed to try to uh, um, uh, manage GTD, but uh, to date the results are not uh, not good because uh, is a, a technique that is uh, labor intensive, is expensive, and uh, the worst is that is not really uh, efficient in controlling the uh, the disease. Just to just the, la the last slide for um, to give you the. Uh, the new about the herbaceous grafting and uh, for instance in nursery uh, to improve the quality of the grafted planting material the French Institute for Viticulture has, test, has tested the herbaceous grafting that uh, produce uh, a bit of grafting and could allow to obtain a GTD free planting material. Uh, hoping this information could be useful, I'd like uh, to thank you for your attention and I invite you to visit the Y-Network website for more information. Goodbye.